Women want pre-packaged men. Men who are already up to standard, already have everything that they want, already have money, already have resources, already have a house, already have success. And this is part and parcel with the culture that we live in, but it's not just the culture that we live in. It is the gynocentric nature of how women have become corrupted, right? The concept of love and then all that does not mix, right? If you want a prepackaged guy to have everything you want, and if you look at the dating sites, right, go look at the dating sites. They are set up in such a way where you can literally just um, filter what you want, right? Filter what you want in a man. I was, t I was talking to this guy... And um, he sent me this link. It's, it's from The Guardian. I'm, I'm just going to bring it up real quick. Um, it's about dating, lifestyle and dating. And this is what it, this is what it is. It's from The Guardian. I, that might be a right-leaning website. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's, it's just an objective uh, piece of journalism. Dating, sales funnels, and high-value men. The rise of strategic dating. I'm not going to read it, but it's basically this, you know, this woman who systematized her dating into a sort of funnel where she basically, um, and, and you can go read it. It's, it's on the Guardian. It's called Sales Funnels and High Value Man. There you go. But it's basically um, this woman who explains that how she filtered out all the men that she didn't want. So she put a list of, uh, you know, all the characteristics she wants, height, you know, amount of money, you know, ethnicity, blah, 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 right? Whatever she wanted, she filtered it out and she figured out she's gonna filter out these kind of guys who were looking for this, you know, age and, and all these things. And, she, and, and, and this is essentially what these dating sites are in today's day and age, right? Tinder, Bumble, Plenty of Fish, Match.com, eHarmony, OkCupid, et cetera, right? It's just a funnel, right? This is what you, you know, this is what you want, right? This is pre-packaged if you think about it. So it's essentially, <laughs> it takes something that should be beautiful, which is courtship, which is attraction, which is the naturalness of meeting somebody in an organic way and developing a vibe and developing a, a bond and a, a chemistry based on meeting somebody in person and it's packaging it down, stripping all that humanity out of it, all that naturalness out of it and and filtering it into something which is, is such an inorganic word that she used, you know, this word funnel. That's inorganic. She, so she's, she wants to funnel out and cipher through all the undesirable men. And what is that at its core? It's hypergamy, right? She wants the best possible male in all her little things that she thinks she wants. And then she slaps the label of love on the end. Like, I like this guy. And, and then she, and, and the funny thing is, the ironic thing is that, you know, when you read that uh, article, as she goes down and she lists off how she funneled and how she, you know, ciphered through all the undesirable men that she didn't want, what she says was when she met the guy that had all the things that she thought she wanted, there was actually an instant click and she instantly, there was an instant chemistry and she instantly felt like, and she knew that he was the one. She just knew he was the one, right? Which is funny. It's like, but that's what it should be anyways, right? So it's like, maybe she got lucky. I don't know. But it's like, I think that is organic meeting somebody. And it's like, I just feel good about this person or even meeting somebody and like, yes, we click, you know, maybe there's some things that aren't that great about that person. I don't know, you know, but over time you develop a bond. I believe this is what pair bonding is supposed to be. But you take that away when you do all this funnel. So she got lucky maybe, or because I don't think that's what it is for everybody. Like, oh, this person has everything that I want. And then here he is and oh great. And it just clicks and it's like, I just knew he was the one like, or maybe she just said that because that's something cliche that lots of people who are in love say, I don't know. But bottom line is when you, 
really look at that from a bird's eye view. Like, what is that? She wants a pre-packaged man. She wants a man who already has everything going for him. And this coincides with what Richard Cooper always says. I don't know where he got it. Maybe from Rolo Tomasi. I don't know where Rolo Tomasi got it. Maybe from the interwebs. But that saying, which I love saying, women sit around at the finish line and pick the winners. It's the same concept. She wants a pre-packaged man. She wants to, you know, you go to the store, it's so convenient, you, you can read the nutrition label, you know everything that's in this food, and it makes it easy for you to figure out the right types of food for you. I mean, this is all part of a process of life, but when you apply that to relationships, it takes away spontaneity, it takes away the human aspect of it, it takes away the chemistry aspect to, to, to a good extent. You know, a lot of times people, and, and I read this article, I think it was like 2000, it was a long time ago, I read this article, 2006 maybe, 2007, I read this article about how it, it, it was a, written by a female and she was advising women to pick men based on logical and rational reasons, right? And I think the article was titled something like, when choosing a mate, uh, trust your mind. Let me see if I can Google that real quick and just see if I can pull it up. It was a long time ago. It was actually in a magazine, so I don't know if it's online, but when choosing a mate, trust your mind. And what it was about was about using rationale and logic and, um, you know, filtering out, um, undesirable characteristics, right? Filtering out, you know, choosing a mate, it's the brain, not the nose that knows, science daily, why, why we choose the mates we do and how to choose the best mate selection, how to choose a male psychology today, laws of attract, blah, 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 all this stuff. And it's probably just, I mean, I'm not going to get into any of that, but, um, you know, it's a weird thing, man, to, to choose, you know, how to find the right person, how to find love, how to, because you don't know, and people change, and people put on fronts, right, people put their best foot forward, and, and the other thing is, if you want a prepackaged guy, or you want a prepackaged person, right, what if they change, what if the things that you liked about them change? They start making less money or they change vocations and now all of a sudden they're, they're working more often. This, it's like, this is why if you get into a relationship for anything but love, you know, it, you're just, it, you're setting yourself up for failure, really. Um... No, I will say that, like, in a way, if a guy has, you know, money, resources, a house, like, he's built his nest, right? If you look at nature, if you go to, like, National Geographic and watch their their videos, you know, it's usually birds or, like, some sometimes, you know, different animals, but they build a nest. And then when they build the nest, they're ready for mating, right? This is, I mean, we're all <laughs> creatures, right? We're, you know, we got to figure out some way to live on this earth and, and um I think it isn't, you know, female nature to pick the guy who has the best nest or pick a guy who has a nest, right? She doesn't want to move in with you with, you know, while you're living with your parents and she doesn't want to move in with you while you're living in a one bedroom, crappy little one bedroom apartment. It's like, how are you going to have kids? How are you going to have a good lifestyle, right? But the thing about it is like that natural thing, that, that kind of nature, like, well, yes, it's more a, a guy who has, has his own house and, and resources and all that's more attractive than, a, you know, some loser guy who's living in his parents' basement or something, right? That's attraction, but it's a, it's, a, it's an attraction based on survival. It's not an attraction based on the soul or an attraction based on your heart, right? It's an attraction based on survival and it's attraction based on the fact that you want a good life, right? And you want to, and this is why I always say in so many of my videos that women like to live vicariously through men, whether they're living through, you know, vicariously through men's successes by being proud of his success and oh my man's so successful and this is hypergamy right um or they're living vicariously through the man's resources by what he provides specifically the lifestyle that he provides and i talked about this in so many videos right 
Um, this is really the turning men into utility, turning men into a means to an end. And that's why I say when, when women are looking for prepackaged men, this is what they're looking for. They're looking for a guy who already has everything that they want, right? <laughs> but what does that have to do with love? What does that have to do with really loving that who that guy is? And this is a thing that I always say, and I think that men need to be you know, understanding of this and need to be wary of this. If a woman is choosing you for your success, she's not really choosing you, you. She's choosing what you do, you see? She's choosing what you do and specifically what you do for her, right? Because what does she want from that success? She wants your resources, right? Which means, you know, comfortability, ability to, you know, survive and eat good food and be comfortable and have security, right? These are, I mean, these are important things in life. But when it comes to love, if you don't have those things, she wouldn't choose you. Is that really love, right? And this is, you know... This is what I'm talking about. This is part and parcel with this selfish culture, this narcissistic culture, which says, well, why shouldn't I have the better thing? Why would I go shop at Goodwill when I can go to the mall and get something fresh and new, right? Why would I go, why would I choose a guy who is broke and, you know, a loser over this guy who's got a bunch of money and he can provide me this great lifestyle? He has this house. I like his house. It's comfortable to go live in his house. Like you would think like objectively you put yourself in their shoes and you're like, I mean, that kind of makes sense. It's like, yeah, you, you, you'd have a better life with that guy. You'd feel better. You'd be happier. Like, but again, it's like when we're talking about real love, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I get that that's attraction. I get that, 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 that those things are perks. That's comfortability, things like that. But from a man's perspective, and this is why I, you know, I got to, Guys need to be wary of that. Is she using you for those things that you do for her? Is that really why she's attracted to you? Or is she attracted to you because she really loves you? Meaning she's going to build with you. She's going to go suffer in the trenches with you. She's going to be by your side if you get sick. She's going to be with you through thick and thin. Right? That's real love. That's the type of woman you want. That's real loyalty. Loyalty isn't, oh yeah, I'm loyal to you because you got a house and you provide for me and so I'm going to be loyal to you. Like that's a type of loyalty, but that's not really bare bones in the trenches fundamental loyalty, right? That's conditional loyalty. Like I'm loyalty to you, I'm loyal to you because you fulfill these conditions, right? That's not what real love is, right? Um, real love would be despite your shitty situation, despite the fact you don't have any money, despite the fact that, that you have a bad life or, or, or you can't provide me with the lifestyle that I want, right? I still love you and I'm still going to be loyal to you. Like if you can find that in a woman, like that's gold. That's gold. You know, that's worth more than gold because anybody can buy a woman like, okay, I, you know, I went to school, got this really nice job, got a really nice house. Cool. I got this, I got this nest. Right now, let me go on the dating sites and I can attract a woman. It's like, hey, I, this is what I'm offering. I'm offering this nest. And she's used to chasing these bad boys who not only don't want to settle down with her or even date her, they probably are, are you know, they probably are broke. They probably don't, because, you know, they're bad boys. They're spending all their time going to the gym and being narcissistic and partying. And they're not working hard like that nerdy guy who, who went to college and got that good degree. And now he's got this nice house. And because he spent all that time instead of, you know, going to the gym, you know, hitting up all these women, right? He couldn't do that because he maybe wasn't as hot as the guy. He wasn't as chat as, as the other guys. So he stayed at home and he, and he studied. And now he's got this nice house. So when she's done riding the cock carousel, right? When she's done getting pumped and dumped by Chad, because women want an emotional connection. Women want somebody to love them, somebody to hold them, right? Women are emotional like that. And then, unfortunately, sometimes they're not. A lot of times they're not. A lot of times they're the opposite of that. They're greedy. They're... Anyway. Eventually, this is what everybody wants. But but women want that too. You know, and, and women need more of an need more of an emotional connection in that way than men do. Men can have sex and, and, and they don't need an emotional connection. They don't need chemistry. They can just bang it out because we're visual. 
Women need that emotional bond and she, and she needs to feel that he's masculine. He's strong. He can take care of her. He's, he's on his purpose, all these things, which is good advice. But I always say like, if you have to do all those things, check off all those boxes, be masculine, stay on your purpose, have money, you know, not pay her that much attention, you know, show her you have other options, show her you don't need her, all this kind of crap. If you have to do that, you probably wouldn't, you probably shouldn't want to be with that woman anyways, because she's not going to love you for who, for who you really are. If she loves you when you're needy, dependent, right? When you're messing up, when you're overweight, when you're broke, if she loves you when you're on the bus. I always, I always remember this song by 50 Cent. I think it was it's called 21 questions or something like 16 questions or 21 questions something like that and, and it goes like would you love me if i was on the bus would you da, 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 would you love me if i was broke da, da, da. like that's a great song man I, I don't think 50 cent ever married either i think he's just been a playboy his whole life which makes sense because i mean i i, I mean I've, I've never been a fan of 50 cent like he's got a couple good songs and i, I never really respected him that much because he's always trolling people and but anyway that's another story but but I respect that. I respect that song. And I respect the fact that he never got married because it makes sense. It's like, wh why would you get famous and popular and rich and then get married? Like, that's the stupidest thing you could do. I always say that too. That's the stupidest thing you could do. Right? <laughs> oh, now that, I, now that I got money, now it's time to get married. It's like, how dumb, dumb are you? Like, take the red pill. They just want you for your money. They just want you for your fame. Where were they when you were on the bus? Where were they when you were broke? Where were they when you had nothing? You know? And sometimes even that you can't trust. You know, I've been with women before who, who I've dated in the past who didn't say anything about me being broke, who didn't say anything about me, you know, not being successful or having a house or this or that until hard times came. Then when hard times came, up oh, all of a sudden she's you know, talking shit about, oh, you know, you don't make any money. Oh, you know, you this and that. But, but while she's with you and you're giving her that good dick and she, and she likes you and all that, she's not saying anything about that. This is why you, you can't trust. You can't trust their nature. Because they know exactly how much money you make. They know exactly your potential. They know exactly who you are because these are things that they assess right away when they meet you. Because this is how, this is their nature. This is that female brain, right? <laughs> So why would you, <laughs> so why would you buy a woman? Why would you jump through all these hoops just to get this woman who's, who's fundamentally unloyal, whose love is, is very conditional? Why would you want to have a baby with something like that? If this is all of them, if this is their nature, MGTOW is the best option. The red pill is the best option. Because at least, you know, you might be lonely, but at least you have integrity. At least you, you have genuineness. At least your life is real. And you're not out here trying to earn money so you can keep, you know, keep, a, uh, keep a woman happy. You're not out here trying to, you know, impress her with your masculinity and going on all these YouTube videos, learning how to be more alpha and how to hold your frame and all this stuff. And I'm not saying, you know, all that's bad advice. Not at all. There's some really good advice there. But again, if you have to perform, if, if you have to turn your relationship into a performance of this is how I am and I'm, I'm being masculine or you know, I need to keep this woman. You know, and it's like, why? Does she really love you? Does she really love you for who you really are? Or does she love you for what you do for her, for, for, for your resources, for your masculinity, for that front that you put on? She fell in love with that guy. The idea of you or whatever. Like she didn't love you for who you are when you're, when you're goofy or when you're joking or when you're messing up or when you're, you know, screwing up, failing, right? That's the true test of love. Someone once said that the true test of love is when, for a man, is when he has abundance and all kinds of options. And the true test of a woman is when the man has no options and he has no abundance and he's broke and, he, and, he, and he's a loser, right? That's a great quote. If a man has all kinds of options and he can sleep with any kind of woman and i've seen that before i've seen it before you know guys could guys know they could sleep with i, I could sleep I, I i could go to the club and take home four women but i love this woman and i'm being i'm being loyal and faithful to this woman that's that's real loyalty and more what's more rare is a woman who's like yeah i could go get this guy who's got a boat i could go get this guy who's got this really nice house, this beach house, this, this really nice car. I could go get that guy because I'm hot enough. But I love this guy and he's broke, but I'm going to stick with him because I love this guy. I've seen that, but it's rare. 
because that's it's rare for females it's more rare for for women to be loyal to a broke guy than it is for women that is for men to be loyal when they have all kinds of options i think but it's it's hard for both though because when guys have options when guys have opportunities easy to cheat for guys i will say that and i'm gonna make a couple a, a, a couple more videos on on stuff like that in a minute but anyway i'm gonna leave it there appreciate you appreciate you listening stay tuned for the next northwest podcast coming soon peace